So to me, technology is the application of science, and science is its math, its optics, its chemistry, its physics, and all those things combined give us the amazing technology that powers the AWS cloud. And in a sense, we're really giving back by using the cloud to power future advancements in science. We work with uh, National Science Foundation. It's a, it's a, it's a national federal agency, uh, as well as National Institute of Health on major projects such as STRIDES. Uh, so one of the projects is uh, to bring major biomedical data sets to a single place uh, and try to develop analytics on top of that such that it can, anyone in this country can use it. With the NSF, we uh, worked uh, with many, many projects. So one of the things we started is with a big data program where one of the ma main ideas is to look at challenges of the country and try to solve it using both research angle as well as what the technology AWS can provide. I think it's going to be all about scale. So when you talk to scientists and they tell you about the ways that they are observing and measuring and collecting data, they've got these vast number of sensors, the cloud is going to help them better take all that data, ingest it very quickly, give them a very easy, convenient place to store it. Once it's safely stored, they can process it, they can analyze it, they can store the summarized results, all without having to think about hardware, about just focusing and thinking about the science. We work together very hard with National Science Foundation and uh, there was a pro uh, program which was created called Cloud Bank. And the Cloud Bank acts as that intermediary such that it can help researchers to access cloud resources, including computing, storage, and networking, but also advanced technology like quantum computation, as well as, as, well as modern algorithms, particular artificial intelligence and machine learning. I'm really excited about this idea of quantum computing. So this concept was invented by Richard Feynman back sometime in the middle of last century. The, the theoretical underpinnings were set back then. And now we're at this really exciting point in time when we can actually build quantum computers, we can make them available to our users, and they're able to, to go from this theoretical world of these amazing computers that can do things that classical computers cannot. Now we're gonna give our customers access to these quantum computers.